going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd. So, uh, notice anything different? Take your time, I'll wait. That's right, new pants. Nah, I'm just kidding, I don't wear pants when I shoot these things. The whole studio's different. Finally got the home studio set up, so hopefully the video should look and sound a little bit cleaner going forward. I actually made a video about how I set up this new studio. That's back over on the Blue Collar Nerd channel, so if that's something that interests you, I'll put a card up in the corner of the screen here, and I'll also put a link in the description down below. But for right now, nobody cares about any of that. We got release notes to go over. So the first thing on these notes under integrations. Whew, really kicking the door down, not pulling any punches, because the first thing on these notes is Zapier integration. Now, if you've been following me for a while, then you know that this is something I am all about. Now, if you don't know what Zapier is, I'll give a real high-level explanation here. It is an automation platform. Uh, if you've ever used or heard of the program If This Then That, it's like that, except a lot more powerful. Basically, you can trigger actions based on events. For all you power users out there, it gives you a lot of ability to bend service site into your will. You're gonna feel like you just got superpowers. You know, look, look, here you are, here, you're Tobey Maguire, and then, oh, what's that? Oh, what's happening? Oh, I'm all sticky, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Now to go into too much detail about Zapier in this video would make the video really long. So what I've done is I've started a playlist for you. I'm gonna to link to it in the corner of the screen here and also in the description down below. So far in that playlist, I have a description video going over what Zapier is. I have a setup video walking you through how to set up a plan with Zapier and get Service Titan connected and all of that. And I also have two tutorials of example automations that you can build. And I do plan to keep on shooting more tutorials. So if after giving those a watch, you've got some ideas and, and you'd like to see me build out some new automations, let me know, I'm open to suggestions. All right, next under jobs, we've got the property data beta. That's kind of funky, the data beta. Or if you prefer, the data beta. Access property data with one click to help drive business decisions, including which jobs to prioritize and which technician to send out. Your CSRs can use property data to save time and identify key opportunities. Dispatchers can use it to choose the best technician for the job, and technicians can use it to come equipped and ready to provide the best customer experience. Property data includes the year the property was built, square footage, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, and more. By default, permission to access property data is enabled for all front office employees, but disabled for technicians. Yeah, so this is really cool. Underneath an address now, you'll see this property data link that you can click, and that opens up this flyout with all sorts of information about that property. Now this property is coming from a third-party database, and not every property is gonna have every single piece of information available, but still definitely super handy to give you a really solid idea of what kind of property this is that we're dealing with. And like it said in the note, technicians also have access to this data. They'll be able to dig into it from the mobile side but that is permission-based and it's off by default. So if you have technicians that you want to be able to access this property data, be sure to go into the permissions and enable it. Next, under reporting, we have a new custom report building wizard. A new wizard guides you step-by-step -step to create powerful custom reports. Using an intuitive interface, the wizard leads you through selecting categories, report templates, columns, and sharing settings. Yeah, I like this new setup a lot. It's a much more efficient way to build custom reports. My favorite part about it is in the old setup, the old way to build custom reports, when you were picking a data set, there was no way to know what was really contained inside of that data set. You didn't know what columns you were gonna be able to add to your report. You kind of just had to go off of previous knowledge or guess based off of the name of the data set. And in order to know what was in there for sure, you had to actually fully create the custom report. And then if it turns out that wasn't what you needed, then you have to delete this custom report that you just made and start all over. But with this new building wizard, that's no longer the case. As soon as you select a data set, you see all of the columns that are contained within that data set and you can check them off right from there. And of course, you can hover over the little I to get that tooltip, that little description of what that piece of information is in more detail if you're not sure. That's a whole lot more efficient. All right, now all of that was in the new features section of the release notes, and now we're moving on to the improvements section. So under accounting integrations, we have map service locations with QuickBooks desktop customer jobs. As you're exporting invoices and payments, you can now map service locations to a customer job in QuickBooks. This gives you the ability to control where invoices and payments export in QuickBooks. Under batch and export transactions, we have open transaction records in a new tab. 
you can now open transactions from the invoicing screen in a new tab on your browser. This helps you efficiently review your transactions before you batch and export without losing your place in the list of transactions. Let me break that one down a little bit more. So before, when you were on the invoicing screen, the links on that screen to go to the invoice or whatever kind of transaction, the web browser, like Google Chrome, didn't see it as a link. So you couldn't like right click on it and say open a new tab, it just wasn't an option. You just had to click on it and then it would use that same tab to load the new page. But now you'll notice on that screen, those links are all blue, they look like regular links. Meaning you have that choice now, you can right click and say open a new tab. Or if you're a pro, middle click with your mouse wheel and that will open it in a new tab. That works for all links by the way, just, just middle click with your mouse wheel, just push straight down on that mouse wheel, opens it in a new tab. Next, under customer communications, browser notification on incoming customer chat. To ensure you don't miss incoming customer chat messages, you're now notified of incoming chat messages regardless of where you are in Service Titan. Click a chat notification to open the conversation with the customer. Yeah, so browser notifications. You've probably seen these before somewhere and you've probably seen at least the pop-up that says whatever website wants to send you notifications. So with this, as long as Service Titan is open somewhere, you will get that notification when a new chat message comes in. You don't have to be staring at the chat screen. And these notifications look different on Windows than they do on Mac. The screen shot I have here is on a Windows machine. Now an important detail here is that you have to toggle this on actually and you have to toggle it on per user. It's tied to your browser. So when you're on the chat screen you'll see this little uh, menu icon here in the upper right hand corner. You'll click on that and then you'll have this toggle switch to enable the browser notifications. Once you toggle that on you should get this notification from Google Chrome is what I'm assuming you're using. So you get that Chrome notification that lets you know that Service Titan wants to send you notifications and you'll have to click allow. Now, because this is tied to the browser itself, you might have to re-toggle it if you use multiple computers. So like if you toggled this on on your work computer, but now you want to see the notifications on your home computer, then on your home computer, you might need to go back to that menu, toggle it off and then back on again to get that notification from Google Chrome that asks if you want to allow it. Now you don't have to do that every time, it's just that you're using a new browser now, so you have to allow it on that browser. Hopefully that made sense. But yeah, this is a really useful tool to make sure that you don't miss any chats. All right, next under invoicing we have optional invoice signatures. If you have an agreement with your customer that does not require you to collect invoice signatures per job, in the customer record, you can now select whether or not you want your technicians to collect invoice signatures to close the job. This gives you flexibility to decide if invoice signatures are required for a specific job. I feel like that might be a little bit confusing, so let me clarify. You're able to make this decision on three levels. You're able to make it on the customer level, the location level, or on the job level. So in any of those three places, if you hit that edit pencil, you'll see that invoice signatures checkbox. And if you uncheck that box, then neither the customer acknowledgement nor the customer authorization will be required for that customer location or job depending on what level you're making this decision on. Next we have add service item name to customer invoice. You can choose to add service item name to customer invoices to give customers a title that summarizes the service items added to the invoice. Okay, so a couple things here. What this is saying is by default on the print and emailed view of a customer invoice, you only see the code of the price book item and the description of the price book item. You do not see the title, the name of the price book item. This allows you to add the name. Now this is a gated feature, it's a configuration. So if it's something that you want, you should ask your CSM to enable it for you. And this configuration is actually not new with this release. It's, it's been around for a while, but they're just taking this opportunity to point it out. All right, next under Marketing Pro, we have Customer Email Address Validation. To help improve your marketing performance and ensure you're sending marketing content to actual customers, each of your customer email addresses are now validated and grouped by risk level. You can see an overview of your validated email addresses from a new email section in the Marketing Pro section of Settings. Yes, so now in Marketing Pro, email addresses are validated and assigned some sort of risk level, meaning that it's checking that this is in fact a real email address and there's no typos in it or anything like that. And it also assigns it a risk level on how likely it is that this email is actually going to get opened if we send it there and how likely it is to get marked as spam if we send it there. And this is heavily tied to another feature we have on these release notes, which is automatically suppress emails by risk level. 
So you can now choose what level of risk is acceptable when sending email marketing campaigns. Risky email addresses have a high probability of either not being delivered or ending up in a spam folder, whereas low risk emails have been validated as being an email address that an actual customer uses. You can adjust your risk level in a new email suppression section of the settings under Marketing Pro, and there are three risk levels, high, which is the recommended, and there's also medium and low. If you select high, then all potentially invalid email addresses are suppressed. And that's the choice that Service Titan is recommending to keep your open rates as high as possible. The medium level suppresses most potentially invalid email addresses, but it does not suppress role-based email addresses. Role-based email addresses are things like info at, admin at, accounting at, those sorts of things. And then low, low still suppresses undeliverable, risky, and email addresses that contain a typo, but it doesn't suppress other risky email address types. And if you're curious about what some of those other risky email address types are, there is a knowledge base, I'll link it in the description, that breaks a few of them down for you. But this feature is great, it's gonna really help keep open rates high and help maintain the integrity of your domain. Because the more people mark your emails as spam, the more likely it is that the email provider will start automatically marking your emails as spam, even for other people who have never marked it as spam before. All right, next we have C, potential reach when building new audiences. While building new or editing existing audiences, you now see the total number of people your campaign might reach. Note that the potential reach does not account for your suppression list and does not check if the email addresses in the audience have been validated, so the actual reach might be lower than shown. Next, we have new zone audience filter. So now when you're building an audience in Marketing Pro, you have this new zone filter that allows you to only target customers in a specific geographic area. And last one for this section, we also have select what contact information to use for each customer. To give you more control over where you send your marketing content to, you can now select which contact information is used for each customer with the Marketing Pro updates toggle. If a customer has more than one email address in their record, you can select multiple email addresses and marketing content is sent to each. Note that if a customer unsubscribes or opts out of your marketing content, marketing updates is automatically disabled for each email address that is in the customer's record. Yeah, so you'll find these new toggle switches on the edit page for a customer record. Now note that it has to be the customer record. You won't see the toggle switches if you're on the location record. And you can use these switches to control which emails are receiving Marketing Pro emails. All right, next under memberships. One that I've been waiting for for a long time, hide $0 member savings. Now, if a job subtotal does not include any discount pricing for customers with memberships, the invoice or estimate no longer includes the line member savings $0 and zero cents. Oh, thank you. This has been a pain point for me for a while. This is one of my little pet issues, mainly because it was one of my comfort consultants pet issue and he was constantly up my butt about it. He watches these videos sometimes, by the way. Hi Garrett. But see, for us, we're an HVAC company and the problem was that we don't offer membership discounts on new equipment, on installations. But when the comfort consultant went to present, it would always say potential savings zero dollars on the presentation page, which you wouldn't think is a big deal because it, it's accurate. It's showing the right discount of zero dollars. But the problem was that it consistently brought up the topic of discounts. It was just this very convenient segue right there for the customer to be like, potential savings, huh? Hey, speaking of savings. So I am very happy to see that that will not be showing up anymore. Next, we have control visibility of membership savings. You can now configure memberships so member savings don't appear on customer facing documents and mobile screens. When you deselect the new setting, show member savings, on a membership, customers receive member pricing, but standard prices and any member savings do not display in Service Titan Mobile or on estimates and invoices. This can be useful with commercial customers with whom prices are frequently negotiated and additional discounts don't apply. Yes, and you will find this new feature in the membership setup under the discount section. Next, under mobile, we have a started forms label. To make it easier for your technicians to understand which forms have been started and need to be completed, they can now see which forms have been started in Service Titan Mobile. The started label also shows on the jobs page on the office side so office employees can see if a form was started but not yet completed. Note that forms only receive the started label after the technician begins working on it. Simply viewing the form won't add the started label. Next, easily view and navigate job attachments in Service Titan Mobile. So basically now when a technician taps on a picture that's attached to a job to view it full screen, they're now able to simply swipe left and right to view the rest of the pictures full screen. Whereas before they would have to back out of that full screen view and then select another picture. They couldn't just swipe around. 
And something I know a lot of people have wanted for a while, we have add titles to attachments. When uploading an attachment to a job like a photo or video, technicians can now add a title to each attachment to give them more context. For example, instead of a photo being named photo1.jpg, technicians can now give them a more appropriate title like bathroom sink leakage. Yes, this will be super helpful, especially when emailing pictures and videos to clients. Before we just had those randomly generated names, so there was no way to really know what we were emailing, but now we can give them descriptive titles. Now in this release, only the technicians can give a title. So the natural question is, will Office users be able to edit titles as well? And the answer is yes, not in this release, but that is coming out with the next release, assuming all goes according to plan. All right, next under payroll and timesheets. The job costing tool now shows total labor hours. The job costing tool now shows totals of regular overtime and double overtime hours for all technicians on a job or project. Viewing total hours helps gives you insight on the scope of a job or project. We also now have gross profit percentage on that job costing tool. So the job costing tool now also includes the new gross profit percentage metric to measure the profitability of a job or project. Gross profit percentage is calculated by comparing profit to total revenue. So the formula is profit divided by total revenue times 100 to give you that percentage instead of a decimal. And that is fantastic. Gross profit percentage is a very heavily used metric, especially for installations, at least in my industry. Okay, next under price book, we have advanced filtering of price book items. So you can now filter for ranges of sold hours and prices. So you could say anything with a price between $500 and $2,000 or anything with sold hours between 0.5 and 4. You can also now filter for items that don't have images, videos, upgrades, recommendations, and linked price book items. And for anybody out there trying to increase your Titan score, this is going to be a very handy tool. I know that a certain percentage of your price book items having images and recommendations are part of what factors into your Titan score. So now you can easily filter for those. Next, we have bulk editing price book items. Further innovating on the last release, you can now edit items in bulk right in your price book items table. You can update the fields for multiple items at once, including prices, sold hours, images, upgrades, and recommendations. This is good. This is very good. The export price book button is very close to being dead to me and I like that. So now you're able to check off a bunch of items in the price book and edit them all at once. So if you were trying to add the same image to 10 price book items, you can just check off all 10, upload the image one time. It'll ask you just to confirm that you are trying to do it to all of those items. And then that's it, you're done. Way better than one by one and way, way better than one by one, but on separate individual pages that you have to individually click into like it was just two releases ago. I mean, I've like, I've got whiplash from how fast this price book editing situation is improving. You know, just two releases ago, I was, I was driving home in my Flintstones car. You know, my feet were all dirty and blistered from having to walk it over there. And then all of a sudden there's a knock at the door. Oh, who could that be? Uh it's Elon, hey! Something else I wanna point out real quick, this isn't in the notes, but Service Titan Pricebook Pro now includes electrical service. I know a lot of people have been waiting on that before it was just HVAC and plumbing, but now electrical is included as well. All right, next under reporting, we have a create report option if the search has no results. So basically if you're searching for a report in the report section and nothing comes up, you'll have a link to quickly go into the custom report builder so that you can make whatever it is that you're looking for. We also have cross sale groups columns in the technician performance report template. So you can now include cross sales groups columns in reports based on the technician performance template. This lets you compare sales of price book service items you have assigned to the same cross sales group. Yeah, and if you didn't know, I feel like cross sales groups are a little bit underutilized. So in the price book, you're able to assign multiple services to a cross sale group. And then that carries over to reporting, so you're able to report on sales of that cross sale group. For example, if you had a bunch of indoor air quality items and you wanted to track the sales of indoor air quality in general and not just specific items, then in the price book, you would assign all of your IAQ products and services to the cross sale group IAQ or indoor air quality and then you can report on sales of that group. Same thing if you just wanted to track the sales of upgrades. You could just have an upgrades cross sale group. And this note is just saying that you can now access that cross sale group data in reports that are built on the technician performance template. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this update. Don't forget to hit like if you like this video and found it valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to Service Titans YouTube channel if you've not done that already and hit that bell so you can get notified anytime we upload a new video. By the way, Service Titan has has a podcast. It's called Toolbox for the Trades. You can listen to it on your favorite podcasting app and we're also uploading all of the episodes to YouTube. I'll put a link to it in the end screen you're about to see. You should check it out. Appreciate it. Peace.